All right. Then looking at um, S-based cleanliness, and, and actually this slide should be labeled S-based preparation. Um, for those who've actually attempted or actually successfully integrated S-base uh, with Oracle BI 10G, you know, one of the, the best practices and what we promoted to our clients was always to step into your S-base outline um, and kind of clean up the properties a little bit. Um, you want to jump in and make sure that you're you're naming some of your naming your generations um, for each of your dimensions. Um, you know, really breaking up you know what um, alias tables you 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 want um, in that particular queue, depending on how you're breaking up the model, and um, and really cleaning it up so that when you import this data into OBI, um, you're you're getting perspective. Okay. And so, as I alluded to earlier, uh, one of our questions that we get often, again, is uh, what happens when we do that incremental S-based metadata refresh? Because if, you're, if you model your OBI 11G um, implementation um, off of your S-based data source, and you bring it across that first time, well, that might be uh, maybe a, a, a proof of concept or something like that, or maybe it's your go-forward implementation. And subsequent changes will be made to your S-Base source database cube. And um, the question is, well, if I keep updating my S-Base cube, what's going to happen to my, my RPD? What's going to happen to my OBI EE 11G model um, as, as I sub subsequently update my S-Base um, data metadata? And so there's really good news in this release um, as the incremental updates uh, for refresh metadata in OBI 11G S-based data source is definitely supported. Now there are a couple things just to always, uh, I guess, caveats, if you will, to always keep in the back of your mind as you're um, you're doing this model and you're doing this implementation. So it, when you re-import metadata that's already in your physical um, layer from your previous um, uh, importing of the S-based metadata, uh, you're going to get prompted. It's going to say that some of your objects are going to get overwritten. Okay. Uh, and, and that's really just a possibility of things being overwritten. Um, and then, of course, if you delete data in your data source, so your S-based source, um, when you re-import the data into your RPD or you do that incremental um, refresh, the items that you deleted in the source are not going to be deleted in your RPD physical layer. And if you really think about that, that one is perfectly fine, okay, because you, you would want control over that. You don't want you know, an accidental deletion in your, your S-based model to go in and, and, and wipe out your RPD as well. Um, if you rename an object in the source, so your S-based source, um, the renamed object is imported as a new object in the RPD. So just something to, to be aware of and um, you know, we've got some best practices on, on what to do in all these situation, situations. Um, so um, just again, caveats, things to, to be aware of. And, um, of course, in general customizations that you have performed in the physical layer, um, such as, you know, um, alias column, which is best practice for display, um, they're retained after an incremental import, okay, which is something you want as well. Again, in OBI 11G, always aliasing your columns, uh, best practice. All right, moving on to a really technical bit. Uh, I definitely won't lose anybody here because this is probably as technical as it gets for this session. Um, and so with the new drill down capability, uh, the, the, the real native drill down capability, when you're in a report um, and you're going from in your hierarchy from one level to the next, um, that code is being sent back to the OBI server. And um, right now in 11G, what's basically happening is a bunch of unions are taking place to provide you with that, that step through. So going from from year to quarter to month, um, et cetera. And basically what's happening here is we're getting a union in our on our back end. So if you look at the SQL that's generated uh, from those queries, um, that's kind of what's taking place. And I know it's quite a quite technical uh, piece right there, but uh, a lot of our technical folks are, are looking for that. And I know that question's going to appear on our, um, on our question and answer board. And so another thing I, I just want to... Um, make sure we're throwing out there is, yes, um, Oracle S-Base is, is fantastic. Um, we love it. 
um, Oracle APM tools are, are excellent. Um, but I don't want to leave out two of the other multidimensional engines in case you're leveraging um, those right now in your um, analytics and you're looking at using OBI11G and wondering if um, some of those um, products would be supported. And so in the OBI11G, XMLA is supported. Um, so for those SAP BW users or um, your um, your Microsoft um, SSAS um, analytic analysis services users, um, you're definitely able to leverage those existing infrastructures, pull that data into OBI 11G, okay? And you get a lot of the same value as you do working with SBase um, as an OLAP source. Um, and then, of course, Oracle OLAP. Um, they really stepped up 11G for this OLAP support, and they want to make sure that Oracle OLAP wasn't left in the dark. So Oracle OLAP as well is supported in this release of, of OBI 11G. And um, Oracle OLAP definitely has its place within the um, Oracle product suite. Um, and of course, we're talking about Oracle S-Base today, so um, we'll, keep, we'll keep moving on. All right, so just kind of wrapping everything up a little bit, um, just, just a few key points I want to make sure that everybody attending um, today is, is aware of. And so OBIE 11G uh, release one really just um, went general release in um, September, I think mid-September. And um, with that, we've been really working closely with it. We've got several customers who are on OBI 11G right now um, and starting to integrate that within their organization. They're getting the, the very powerful benefits of using the very nice uh, graphical unit user interface, which definitely helps with user adoption rates um, and uh, amongst other things. And um, one of the key things to point out is that, that the OLAP integration is, is it's here now. And um, we definitely recommend anyone who's coming from OBI 10G or who's currently using Oracle S-Base or some of the EPM tools to, to definitely look at this integration between OBI 11G and, and Oracle S-Base and the EPM um, suite. And, and again, um, like I said, we've got several clients on this right now. So if, if um, your organization would like a, a demonstration of how this integration works um, in a little more uh, length, we can definitely set that up. Um, just please uh, reach out and contact us. Um, I, one other point on that OLAP integration is that, um, you know, based on Oracle Open World this year, um, there's going to be a big push to integrate um, the Oracle um, pre-built analytic applications with SBase, okay, leveraging that aggregation storage power. Um, and so if, if you've got the um, business analytics warehouse as one of your core warehouse and that becomes your, your data warehouse for your organization, well, what happens when you leverage that model, that, that core uh, dimensional model, and then build that out to a very powerful, very speedy um, aggregate OLAP storage engine, okay? So just think about that, and that's kind of what Oracle is looking at accomplishing over the next year. Um, so again, um, the Fusion Middleware stack, um, for upgrading SBase to 11.1.2 uh, is definitely recommended. Um, we, have, we have quite a few customers on, on 11.1.1.3 right now, um, and we've got some people who are, are jumping into 11.1.2, a few customers there. And again, the benefit is you're, you're getting into the Fusion Middleware stack, um, which clearly is the roadmap for Oracle. Um, there are some things to look at there um, as far as you know, integration with WebLogic right now, um, some of the back-end stuff, but ultimately, um, you get a nice, crisp, clean tool. You get that very nice graphic user interface, and you get a lot of functionality. Um, S-Base, Hyperion planning, so they've done a lot of enhancements. So again, definitely worth taking a look at. We recommend it. And um, again, because there's so much detail that could have been thrown into this, this one um, webinar, this could have been three hours. We could have, we could have really um, pumped this up. And um, and, and, I'm, and I'm definitely ready and willing to talk about it. But for the sake of time and uh, the sake of just really making sure we, we uh, hit all of our audience today, um, we're going to introduce some um, additional webinars based on the um, Oracle OBIE 11G and um, 
enterprise performance management integration uh, coming soon. So make sure you look at our uh, biconsulting.com websites and sign up for those webinars as they come available.